Morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Wu. Uh, I'm your extension plant pathologist. I'm here in Tucson. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about, uh, give you a little bit of update on the diseases that I seen in 2021 season. So overall, uh, we don't have any major disease outbreak in our cotton field. Um, we have, you know, the cotton root rot continues to be uh, endemic diseases. Um, but overall, it, 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 it seems to me it doesn't cause, it doesn't cause much damage because, um, because of because application of uh, Top Guard um, Terra product. And we do see uh, verticinium um, quite a bit, uh, mostly in Eloi, Coolidge, and Varanla. And uh, we see some ordinary leaf spot uh, in Suffered and uh, a few fields in uh, Coolidge era. And uh, so I'm going to cover those diseases in more detail. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is the Fuserm wilt. Uh, historically here in Arizona, we don't have uh, much, the, you know, much of a Fuserm wilt in Arizona because our soil is mostly alkaline. And the Fuserm wilt of cotton, uh, it's more prevalent in soil. It's more sandy soil and acidic soil. And uh, uh, so it's caused by a soil bone pathogen called the Fusarium oxysporum, former speciality uh, vas infectum. Um, historically, there are several races that have been identified, one, two, three, four, six, and eight. And uh, in the United States, mostly race one um, uh, and two and uh, uh, three. Um, so, but in the Starting in 2021, there's a, a new risk called risk four started emerging in California, San Joaquin Valley, and it mostly uh, occurred on um, um, Pima cotton over there. Uh, here is a few pictures show you. It's more like a seedling disease, very aggressive. They can really kill lots of Pima cotton plants. So it's uh, it's a threat to uh, Pima cotton. The upland cotton are less affected by FOV4. Um, so the thing about risk 4 is uh, they do not require the root knot nematode uh, to cause the disease. You know, the, the other risks need, the, especially risk 1, need the interaction between root knot nematode. Um, so in 2017, they were discovered in El Paso, and next year, it discovered in New Mexico. So we're doing a project trying to monitor the presence of this risk for in, in our cotton field here. So we started this project back in 2018. Um, this is uh, the fourth year we have been doing it. In, in the first two years, so we rely on the Arizona Cotton Research and the Protection Council field crew to help us collect the, the, the sample. And in the last two years, so we have been uh, visit a lot of field, and we also rely on our, you know, extension colleague like Randy um, and other agents um, to help us collect the sample. And uh, once we receive the sample, we examine for the vascular discoloration, like showing here the picture. You know, uh, those are the typical fusarium uh, staining in the xylem tissue, and then we. If we see this symptom, we will use a risk for specific PCR test, uh, as shown here. Uh, this is from Agdia. And if it's positive, you will see this uh, extra line in the middle. Um, after that, you know, if it, it is, you know, Fusarium, and then we will do isolation on the media, trying to get the pure culture. And then we will use additional parameter and up you know, obtain a DNA sequence, trying to confirm it. Um, so, so last year, uh, the majority of Pima cotton is concentrated in Suffolk Valley in Graham County. And uh, so from uh, March to June, I have been visited most of this field. So the Pima cotton is highlighted in red here. Um, so um, we collect uh, a, a number of sample uh, for the level analysis. And then 
in the mid season uh, from August to September, I would go back again to suffer the valley, uh, to revisit some of those field. Um, and also um, visit more field in Morana, Maricopa, and College, Illinois uh, area. Um, so this is the results uh, from this survey project uh, last year. So we did, we did not detect the presence of risk for, so we don't have it. But we do uh, find a couple of fields that have some fusarium uh, wilt uh, symptom uh, in the field as shown in the picture here. You can see yellowing uh, and the wilting of the plants. And we do have a number of fields that uh, have the seedling diseases. Um, and also a number of fields have root knot nematode. Um, mostly in this field will have stunted cotton. Uh, maybe some dieback from the uh, from the the growth point, and the verticillium. We have a number of fields uh, have verticillium wilt. Uh, last year, uh, this is something we I have not seen in 2020 or 2029. So 2021, uh, for some reason, we have more verticillium wilt, and again, we have a number of fields with the ordinary leaf spot. Um, so this is a field in, in suffered uh, valley with uh, uh, seed rots. And uh, uh, actually is a farm actually first, uh, the, 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 you know, get contacted by uh, Randy. And uh, so we did some isolation. It turns out to be um, uh, this one, what you can see here, this seed rot, actually it is the rhizopus, muco. It's not the PCM or Lactonia here. Uh, cause this seed rot. This seed turns out to have some uh, quality issue. Um, so, th so the grower has to replant this field. A couple more picture uh, show you this field with you know the seedling dice as you can see here, and uh, uh, they replanted this field with uh, uh, a different batch of seed, and uh, it's it, it's it was fine. And then we uh, see. A lumber field with uh, stunted cotton, uh, those are associated with root knot nematode. And uh, I would say um, probably for a lot of this field that has been planted cotton year after year, and uh, we do have a root, root knot nematode issue. And this is something probably we should uh, address it. So this year, uh, I would like to do a survey on the nematode. Um, so I welcome to work uh, some of you. If you have failed with stunted cotton, I uh, would like to get checked out on nematode population. Uh, I can uh, let me know and I can come to assist you and collect sample and get it, um, you know, get, get the nematode uh, counted and identified uh, without any uh, cost to you. So this is the field with uh, fusarium wilt uh, in, in Safford. As you can see, um, the, the, most of the affected plant is uh, scattered across this field. And a lot of field have some real uh, wilting on the dead uh, plant. When you do a cross section of the stem, you can see this, uh, you know, xylem staining. Um, so this is the way uh, you, you try to identify both, you know, uh, the verticinima wilt and the and the fusarium wilt, and the staining pattern is different. For fusarium wilt, it's more like a continuous, as you see here. For verticinima wilt, is more like a, 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 it's a discon discontinuous. I will show you a picture later. For so last year, um, we did recover a number of uh, fusarium wilt. Uh, Fusarium oxysporum vest infectum isolates, and uh, we did some molecular characterization. It's like a, a RIS3 like uh, isolate. Um, so, a little bit more about the RIS4. So, so it's, it's going to be uh, more prevalent on, this, on the young cotton plant, especially in the seedling stage, and uh, a lot. So, the symptom initial, initial symptom is the leaf uh, chlorosis. Uh, stunting, and uh, they really kill the seedling uh, cotton plants really quickly. Um, so as you can see, the symptom uh, is this uh, dark staining in the tap roots. So the staining 
does not appear to extend to the stem section uh, based on this uh, in Texas or California. It's the only uh, the staining uh, present in the tap root. And it, so the FOV4, the fungus is spread through the you know, contaminated soil, through the equipment, or the plant debris uh, moves through the equipment, through irrigation water. Um, in terms of long distance, it's transmitted through the contaminated seed. That's uh, something we should worry about because here in Arizona, we have, we, it's like a cotton nursery state. Um, we produce a lot of uh, seed uh, distribute, uh, you know. Um, so if introduced here, the contaminated, contaminated seed could be a potential um, route. So if, in terms of the management right now, there's some uh, resistant cultivar uh, uh, for, to manage the, uh, the fusarium wilt, wilt or cause by risk for. And uh, the main strategy right now is to you know, try to monitor the pathogen early and to identify them early so we can prevent the restrict the spread. Um, so, so this is a photo uh, in taken in a field in Morana. As you can see, this field is really hit hard by this verticinium uh, wilt. There's uh, many plants in this field uh, have, have wilted. Um, so, the typical symptom is this yellow spotting uh, on the leaf, and uh, we call it the leaf chlorosis. Um, so th this is the photo show you the, the staining of the vascular tissue by verticinium uh, dania. As you can see, uh, it's really, uh, the, the expression of this uh, staining can vary. It can be very light, and uh, some plant can, you know, um, Get severely infected, the color is really dark. And uh, so it's very different, the staining pattern from the fusarium wilt, as you can see uh, in the previous slides. Uh, this is a, a, a plant infected with verticinium wilt. And as you can see, you know, there's a lot of uh, staining uh, in the xylem tissue. This is the uh, we did some isolation, recovered the, the, the fungus in the petri dish. And uh, so basically, the, so the, fun, the fungus kill this plant, you know, after a while, it will go back. They produce a lot of this uh, uh, micro sclerotia. It's like a seed-like structure. They can persist in the soil. It's produced in this uh, infected plant and then later incorporated into the soil and then they can, uh, you know, survive in the soil uh, from this season to the next season. So this is the, uh, the number of fields we have seen where the cinnamon uh, wilt. Uh, so in Graham County, we see about 23 fields. In Pinar, about 20 fields. Um, there, it seems to be, a, a, you know, a number of cultivars and uh, um, have verdicinium wilt. And I'm not sure whether any of this variety listed here uh, have resistance to this, uh, pas this pathogen. So in terms of management, um, if using resistant variety is the, is the most effective. Um, um, so there are some variety have resistance to verticinium wilt. And if you really have a field uh, with the history of verticinium wilt, I really recommend probably uh, to, to determine the risk uh, by doing soil sampling, you know. Uh, the, at the Texas AgriLife, uh, at the Terra Wheeler lab, they have the capability to uh, really uh, determine the risk by, you know, collecting the soil. If you are interested in, let me know. Uh, I can uh, get this information to you. So in Texas, it, it appears, you know, uh, the seeding rates also kind of affect the verticinium wilt, and the disease incidence decreased with the increasing seeding rates. And in terms of rotation, seems to be a lot very effective because the, the fungus have very wide host range. And in Texas, they rotated with sorghum, since seems to be reduce the disease incidence. And irrigation uh, can can make the disease worse because the fungus really like uh, cool soil temperature. So if you, uh, 
through the excessive irrigation, that will increase the risk. In terms of nitrogen fertilization, over fertilization will make the disease worse. Right now, there's no chemical uh, control option uh, for this fungal diseases. Um, so th this is a photo from the Jason Woodward from the Texas. As you can see, on the left is the resistant cultivar. To the right is susceptible cultivar. If you have a high disease pressure, you know the the disease resistance really make a huge difference. Um, so in terms of the automatic leaf, uh, leaf blight or leaf spots, and uh, so we have been seeing this disease um, uh, mostly in Suffolk Valley, also some in um, uh, Pinal County here, and uh, so the. The typical symptom is this brown spot, and uh, it and it can also infect the the bracket and the, the cotton balls, as you show here. If the disease is really hit early in the season, it will really severely defoliate the cotton. Um, so the causal agent is is Ortonera. There are two species uh, can can uh, infect cotton, and we don't know probably. Uh, we have both species here, you know, work done by Peter Cotty many years back. They discovered both species uh, here present in Arizona. So this is a picture of the fungus and also this is the Canadian spores. So it uh, appears the uh, Pima cultivar are more susceptible uh, to, to this disease. This picture show you, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, there's some difference here um, on the, to the left and to the right, you know. Um, okay, so I, so I have to say, I, I talked to Randy, so per, perhaps uh, in 2022 season, um, uh, our growers probably going to expect to plant more Pima cotton uh, acreage, probably uh, the ordinary leaf spot, maybe become an issue. So maybe we should conduct a trial to evaluate uh, the efficacy of some of this fungicide uh, in terms of the control of the ordinary leaf spot. Um, so uh, this is a picture show you the cotton root rot. Uh, so what I want to point out is, you know, I visited all this field. Most of the field have some cotton root rot, but mostly have some very small disease, disease uh, four side uh, scattered across the field, not uh, in a big patch, you know, kill a lot of cotton plant. Probably that has something to do with our cotton growers has been using top guard tire to control uh, those diseases, you know, those diseases. So the last disease I want to mention is the- uh, is Alex, the you have two minutes. Okay, this is my last slide, Randy. Okay, so it's about the cotton if the wolf uh, virus. And we don't have it here in Arizona. So this virus um, is a single-stranded RNA virus, and it's transmitted uh, through the aphids. And the the weight pig weights can serve as a host. Um, so it this disease is um, become increasingly important in in you know in in southeast and uh, like Georgia. Uh, Mississippi, uh, Alabama. Um, we don't have it here in Arizona yet, but we need to uh, on the lookout for this disease. So basically the symptom is this uh, uh, drooping leaves and uh, also kind of like a crinkling, coupling up. And it's resembled to uh, like the herbicide damage like 24D. And uh, so, um, Last season, I do in some field a similar symptom, but uh, we we took some plants back uh, for testing and uh, do the PCR test, and uh, we didn't detect uh, this virus so far. Um, so um, my lab right now do have the uh, ability to test this uh, um, this virus, and uh, we can. I can also work with Judy Brown if you know if we suspect 
you know, if a sample is positive, and she actually is the first one detected this virus in, uh, in Alabama. So uh, this, this is a, co a, a couple of extension article I wrote and with Randy and uh, summarized some of the disease I mentioned about. If you're interested, they have more information about the symptom, you know, disease cycle, management information. Um, you can go to the University of Arizona um, Cooperative Extension website and uh, Google this uh, extension number, uh, publication number, uh, you will be able to download for free. Um, so this work uh, was funded through uh, Cotton Incorporated and also uh, Arizona Cotton Grower Association and uh, also um, by Arizona Cotton Research and Production Council. Um, I would like to thank their support for this work. And that's my 